Hi, I'm Javis Lewis, and today I'm going to show you how to tear down a core data stack with the master detail template, and more importantly, how to rebuild it all inside a running app. Today we're going to look into how to tear down your core data stack. This is something that you find frequently mentioned in the Apple documentation, but they don't really tell you how to do it, and they're a tiny bit sketchy on how you need to achieve that goal. So we want to do something like this. It's a little application based on the master detail template where you can add records like you used to, and then we put a big button there that lets us tear down the stack. And rather than the app becoming unresponsive, crashing with lots and piles of error messages, we would like the app to remain active and just clear out everything we have, delete the store file, and start from scratch. So let's have a look at how we do this in detail. First of all, we're going to start from the master detail template with core data, of course. And assuring that everything's working, we're going to add a big tear down button. And what this will do is it'll call a method that we're going to implement in our app delegate file that will tear down the core data stack and clear out all the current objects that we have displayed in the table view. Then we're going to rebuild that stack all in the same method. It's relatively easy to do. That's not going to be enough. That'll probably be enough if you're not using the master detail template, but to make it work in this context, uh, no pun intended, we're going to also have to reinitiate our fetched results controller. Very important. Otherwise, those new results or the no results that we get when we clear out the core data stack will not make it over to our table view. The tools we're going to use for this exercise are Xcode 5.1, my favorite Xcode release so far. And we're going to make this work on iOS 7.1 as well as iOS 6. We're not going to leave our iOS 6 users behind. We don't need a real device for this, so the iPhone simulator will suffice. So in detail, how do we do this? Well, first of all, when we write our method in the app delegate file, we're going to have to lock and reset our current managed object context. Um, that is so that in case somebody else calls it from another thread, unlikely in the case of our exercise app, but very likely in the, in the real world, we need to make sure we're the only people who can mess with the managed object context at that point. Then comes the secret source. It's all about the NS persistent store coordinator. That's really the key ingredient here that we need to really reset. Uh, we need to remove all store files from him, and we're going to do that because uh, in the template you're only going to have one store file, but in the real world you could have more than one. So we're going to iterate through all of them and remove them all, just in case. Then we need to set the context and coordinator variables to nil. This is not exactly super clean practice, but it certainly gets the job done and means we're kind of writing almost like a custom custom initializer to do that. And speaking of custom initializers, we're then, once we've set the variables to nil, we can just call self manage object context again on the app delegate and that will reinitialize our core data stack. Once we've done that, our master view controller does not know about the fact that that's just happened. So we need to resubmit our self.manage object context back to the master view controller. And once he knows that there have been changes in the manage object context, we need to also reset our NS fetched results controller to update the table view. Sounds complicated? It isn't actually when you see it in practice. So let's get started. I'm going to start with a brand new Xcode project here. This is going to be a project for iOS, master detail application. This is what we want. And I want to do this for iPhone only, and I'm going to use core data, of course. I'm going to call this project tear down. Seems appropriate. And we'll save it somewhere, create a Git repo as well. That's all good. So the first thing before we start doing anything, I guess, is we're going to see if that thing works on our simulator. I thought it would. I would have been very surprised if it hadn't worked. So we can add records. We can even go in here. Not much happening, just as it comes out of the box. So the first thing I want to do in the storyboard is I want to take that edit button out and create a teardown button that is created here. So I like to do this in the storyboard. Let's go over here. In the storyboard, you notice we don't actually have a button. That's because the template creates the edit button in code. So once we've attached that here, we also need to make sure we take that out of the code. Put one of those in here, bar button item on the left, and we'll call it tear down. I like it. 
switch into the assistant editor and hook him up to an action. Control drag from that button over to somewhere here. And this is just a method that we will call in our master detail view controller when we'd like to tear down and rebuild the stack. We're not actually going to tear down the stack here. We're going to talk to the app delegate and he will do it on our behalf. So we'll call this tear down. And that should do it. Let's go over to the master view controller implementation file and find that one pesky line that creates that edit button in code. There we go. Self dot edit button. That's the one. Self navigation item left bar button item. Let's just comment it out and leave the rest intact. Let's go into our app delegate implementation file. Scroll to the very bottom. In fact, let's collapse all those methods. Scroll to the very bottom and start writing our teardown method. This avoid method, and we're just going to copy that signature here and put it into our header file so that it becomes a public method. Do you know the drill? Let's go back down and start tearing our core data stack down. Now, what's the first thing we want to do? We want to talk to our managed object context and make sure it's locked and reset. So let's do that. Lock means no other threats can talk to the managed object context at this time while we're messing with it. And reset means all changes that may have happened since the last save are forgotten. Next, let's create an array. We, this is probably a bit more complex than it needs to be, but this array will hold all our current persistent store files. In the template, this is only going to be one, but in the real world, there could be more than one store files. So we're just going to remember which ones they are so that they can all be reinitialized again. Self persistent store coordinator, persistent stores. Those are them. So we're going to iterate through them all with the for in loop. And in here, we want to do two things. We want to remove each store file from the persistent store coordinator. And we're going to conveniently not have an error checking here because we're so confident that our app is never going to come up with an error. Once we've done that, we also need to delete the store file from the hard drive, if that's what you want to do. You can also omit that step and instead add a different store file in this case. We're just going to delete it so that we're going to start with a clean state. In case you ever forget this code, it's up here where the persistent store coordinator is initialized in the custom initializer method. There's this massive block of commented code here that Apple gives you, and it's really useful because there's this line here, NS file manager default manager remove item at URL store URL error nil. So copy that. That is that code that allows us to delete the store file. And of course, that store URL isn't correct anymore. We're going to need the current store URL because that is this current store that we're currently iterating through. Its URL will be removed by the file manager. So that is the persistent store coordinator taken care of. In fact, while we're here, let's reset its synthesized variable like this. And we'll do the same with the manage object context. This may not seem extremely clean code to you, but the reason why we do that is because in the next method, we'll just call that custom initializer for the managed object context again by doing this self managed object context. And it becomes a bit clearer when we look at how this works. So if I call self manage object context, then the app will go up here, 
to the custom initializer of the manage object context. And the first thing it asks is if the variable for manage object context is not nil, i.e. it exists already, then return it without actually initializing it. By setting this variable to nil, it will be initialized. And because it asks to set the persistent store coordinator, it will then go ahead and initialize this method here, the custom initializer for the persistent store coordinator. And in it, exactly the same happens. If it happens to not be nil, it just is returned. By setting it to nil, this statement is ignored and this is reset up. And that's exactly what we want. Right, perfect. The last thing we need to do is because we've changed all these things, the reference to the managed object context is going to be a different one. So we need to resubmit that to the master view controller. And remember, this happens up here in our app delegates application did finish launching with options method up here. This is where our managed object context from the app delegate is passed into the master view controller. So we'll just copy all that code. It's probably a more elegant way to do that by centralizing this into its own method. But we're going to keep it rough and dirty here and just do a bit of copy and pasting. So this thing grabs the root view controller from our storyboard and initializes a new master view controller object and passes that our own app delegate self manage object context. Make sense? It certainly does. Now, if it's changed, our master view controller will have the new data and will work. Sadly, that's not enough. We can try it out, but core data will come back with an error message here. First of all, if I press this button, nothing's going to happen because I haven't set it up yet. So let's first of all go into the master view controller and write our method that should be somewhere down here, tear down. This is the method that we've hooked up to that button. So in order to speak to our apps app delegate, we would need to import him up here. Import the app delegate. Further down in our method, we're going to create our own. So app delegate my app delegate. And we're going to get him by talking to the UI applications delegate. So That would be a reference of our current app delegate. And now that we have a reference, we can call a method on him. Tear down core data. So this will now initiate that method from our master view controller. Let's see what happens if I run this thing. Tear down. Nothing appears to happen. Well, what happens if I add new records? Oh, big problem here. Lots and lots of big problems. And really what's interesting here is the reason that the object's persistent store is not reachable from the manage object context coordinator. Well, that's a bit of a shame, isn't it? Because we thought we had initialized it all. Let's go and make absolutely sure what we've done here. Well, it looks like in here everything is fine apart from one thing I've forgotten to do, which is, the, which is to unlock the manage object context. But that wasn't the reason. If we try this again, it's still going to fail. The reason why the table view was freaking out was because the underlying NS fetch results controller wasn't actually reset. So let's do that next. So this is back in my master view controllers implementation file. And in here we can do we can employ something that we did earlier. We're going to set the variable of the fetch results controller to nil. Therefore if we call this again it will be reinitialized and it will refetch all its objects, which are now, of course, different. That alone isn't enough. We're also going to tell our table view that it needs to reload all its data. And that, my friends, should do the trick. Let's see if I'm right. That's good. Everything has been cleared out. Let's add some records. Adding records still works. Let's tear it down. Teardown works, table view is cleared out. Well, two out of three is not bad. Let's add more records. Oh my god, it works. Is this amazing or what? I could do this all day. It's very exciting. So we're resetting our core data stack completely. 
deleting everything from our documents directory or the store files that are there. And as soon as we do that, a new store file is being created and we could just keep playing this all day. And the app doesn't crash, doesn't have to be restarted, doesn't give you any headaches. Quick, rough, dirty, we like it. There's a full working version of this up on GitHub. I'm at github.com forward slash verse Lewis and the project is called Teardown Test. Let's see how we've made it all happen. So first we started from the master detail template and added a new button that would call a method. In this method, in the master view controller, that method would call another method in the app delegate. And in that method, in the app delegate, we first locked and reset our managed object context so that no other threat can have access to it while we're messing with it. Then we removed all store files from the NS persistent store coordinator, just iterating over an array. And in that we've removed each store file from the coordinator and we've also deleted it from disk so that we start afresh. Then we set the context and coordinator variables to nil. Those are the ones that start with the underscore. And by doing that, we're then able to call that custom initializer on the manage object context again. And by doing that, that custom initializer will also ask for the persistent store coordinator, which also automatically gets reset. It's not the cleanest code, but I think it's a very effective method. Thank you very much to Luke McNeese, by the way, from Ireland. He's given me that tip on Stack Overflow, so kudos to him for providing that. Very well done. Once that's done, we needed to resubmit our manage object context to the master view controller because it was changed. The master view controller was still holding onto the reference from the previous change. So we need to resubmit that to make all those changes available on the master view controller. And because the fetch results controller was based on the old managed object context, we need to reset that one again as well. And we do it the same way as we reset the manage object context by first setting the variable to nil and then just calling that custom initializer again. Very sweet, very simple. If you have any better solutions, if there's a cleaner way of doing it, please let me know. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave a comment and please subscribe to my channel for more tips and tricks on iOS development and all kinds of other techie stuff. And don't forget to share this video with friends, family and random strangers. I will see you next time. Mm -hmm.